bro, I spent a good amount of money on bonds, books, and shit like that for people to switch up on me. You know what I mean? Like, look, bro, I'm not one of those people like, oh my God, you switched up on me? I'm still Trigger Max. Oh, fuck you, nigga. You don't got love. Fuck, I don't need you. Nah, 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 boo, boo. I got a lot, of, a lot of niggas locked up. I just want to always, like, you know what I'm saying, write a letter to them. Like, I send money on JPay. I write little letters on JPay. But, you know, they respect the moment you sit down, you write the letter, letter. So, this is my letter to them. TJ was staying with me, you know what I'm saying? That's like my partner, producer. he been producing with me since, like, my earlier tapes. He brought, like, the real soul for the, huh, huh. Like, that's his sample in the beat. Like, you know what I'm saying? I thought it was Mariah Carey or something. I'm like, nigga, what you doing? You know what I'm saying? Uh, but yeah, he brought that part. Mike, like, Mike Dean cleaned it up, brought the sharpness, the real instruments, you know what I'm saying? I'd rather be carried by six before a judge by 12. Fuck 12 before I tell, take a 38 shell. You getting judged by 12 individuals that don't know nothing about you. Never had a struggle. Never had to go hustle to make sure that the light's on or nothing like that to judge what you going through and what you did. That's not fair. That's cruel and an unusual punishment. So I'd rather, like, you know what I'm saying, in my head, I'd rather not be living before I go through that because the stress you put your mama through, your family through, you know what I'm saying, just your mental well-being, I just take a shell. But see, taking a shell, though, you don't know what, you, you take a shell in the foot, take a shell, shell in the leg, you ain't got to take it in the head. Rather be carried by six before, judged by 12, fuck 12 before I tell, tell them crackers burning hell. My first real experience with the police, I was 12 years old. They kicked in our door to come grab my dad. They had pistols at, at my mama, pistols at everybody in the house. It's basically like kicking the door, hitting the lick, but something the police. They come in, they up their pistols, and they take what they want. That's illegal, you know, for us to do it. But they the police, so I guess they can do it. But man, fuck 12. I got homies in the gray. I got brothers in the pen. I got something that's coming home. I got something that's going in. I don't think I had all my homies out with me since 2008. I lose a lot of homies, you know what I'm saying, to like the grave, but I lose more homies to like going to jail, aggravated robberies, murders, stuff like that, you know what I'm saying? That's still a loss too. You know, even though they ain't dead, you damn near dead, the damn state system take everything from you, strip you from your rights, you know what I'm saying? Try to go to visitation, but they wouldn't let me in. So our only conversation, writing letters with a pen. Wanna see this how you doing, wanna know this how you been. Tell you who your bitch been screwing, checking on your mama and them. I keep them updated with all the mess. They don't miss nothing. They wanna know that though. They wanna know everything, cause they not in touch with the world. They don't care if you 43 minutes ago, they wanna know that. And then a lot of them, they be mad. They just be like, man, bro, you a hoe. You don't fuck with me in, see me no money in two weeks. Ooh, 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 but as soon as you write them back, get on the phone with them. Hey, brother, what's up, bro? I miss you, bro. Mm -hmm. You know, free little Jordan. That's my little bro. That's how he at. Hope we get a second chance. We've been now since elementary. Hope one day we meet again, but you out this penitentiary. Cause it's cracking, hope you straight. No, you thugging like you should. Seen your mama yesterday, gave her money for your books. Different day, the same shit. Nothing changed on Murder Block. That's 1010 Form Park. You know what I'm saying? That's the block, that's the set. We call it Murder Block. Cause it's like, Exactly what it is. A lot of murders. Like that street was a murder capital for Houston for like years. Don't go over there. You ain't got no business. A couple of homies hit a lick and got the other homie shot. They got shot up with a K. I got good and bad news. They say Rachel gonna be straight, but slow group and make it through. They hit Rachel up with eight. Only his slow group with two. It's crazy because they because they both got shot out with like AK 47s, two twenty three bullets. Rachel got hit up eight times. He survived. It took two to kill slow groove. You know. And that's just crazy. By right this time last year in May, Crackhead Junkie killed Young Deuce. Shit, he one of my locs. Like, all these guys I'm screaming, they like, y'all call them Crips, y'all call them gangbangers. I call them my brothers, my crudders. We lost Young Deuce, like, a sherm here. You know what sherm is? Water, PCP. Yeah, that's my like fingernail polish remover and stink, but yeah, a sherm head had took his life. I seen your stupid baby mama, she still acting like a thot. Always fighting, causing drama, she be fucking with the house. That's a why she never write you, why she never help you, why she say you tripping, you don't listen, then your temper always hot. You can't be out there fucking with the ops, like the same niggas that got him in jail, you out there running with, then you complain about his temper, but he caged, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, when you in jail, you at your lowest. Anybody that's out free, I don't care if you paralyzed, if you, Living on the side of the freeway, 
you doing better than anybody in jail. Because when you in jail, you in last place. There's nothing you can do about it till you get out. Now, let me tell you about your daughter yesterday. She tried to walk every day. She getting smarter the other day. She tried to talk. You can't be there like a father in this fucking with you mentally. As a parent, that's something that you want to be there for. The first words, first birthday, first catch, first everything, you know, that's like heartbreaking. You know what I'm saying? Knowing that you can't be there to see it. But at the same time, it's good to know. Court appointed lawyer got you stuck in penitentiary. Court appointed lawyer, they there, bro. They getting paid by the state. You know what I'm saying? Whatever. They there for your case, but you not paying them, so they don't give a damn. To them, you just a McDonald's. Like, they don't care. Whatever. It's just something real quick. But when you go and spend that bread, get that power of attorney, you're like, okay, now it's filet me young with the side. You know what I'm saying? They going to serve you better. Instead of stressing, come on, bless the Lord's know it could be worse. It could be worse. You could be on death row, you get a death penalty. To me, that's worse, but at the same time, it's not. Because I tell you, you know what I'm saying, I already be cared about six before judge by 12 anyways. But death row is crap. Like, let's say they send you to death row. You been on death row for 50 years, maybe 30 years before they kill you. Imagine sitting like, oh yeah, I'm going to die. I'm going to die soon. I mean, we all going to die. But just imagine, like, your life is in the hands of was in the hands of 12 people that don't understand you. I got niggas in the pen and I got niggas in the dirt. Pray to God I keep my faith, cause right now I'm losing hope, so I'ma pray to that dope, put my faith in the work. I know you worry about me cause oh, we ain't talking a minute. Don't think a nigga trying to know you. I'm just handling business. On my way here, I was blowing and they told the lieutenant. Word got back to the warden and they canceled my visit. I was going to see my brother, Lil Jordan. It was some hating ass, some hating ass dude. I guess we came in a, Smell like dope. I guess he went complained. Woo woo woo. Like he like mota mota mota. Then like they try to maybe go in the warden room. I'm like hell nah. I'm not incarcerated. I'm not talk to me right here. I'm not stepping inside Joe. I'm not nah. So what's up? Just like I smell like marijuana. So I can't do the visit. I gotta come back when I can. But I think they took me off the visiting list though. They on some fuck shit. Fuck what you see. They just trying to fuck you all over. I dropped 40 on your lawyer trying to reduce the sentence. He better than that court appointed. He gonna fight to a pilly. But you gotta stop tripping. I heard they caught you with a phone and they threw you in a hole. You probably wonder how I know. Somebody else that he was locked up with hit somebody I know. And then they hit somebody else I know. That person told me that my bro got G5. So basically, like, can't catch you with a phone and take all your privileges, take away like your wreck. All that, take away your commissary, all that. I miss them days when we was mobbing, we was robbing just for fun. If you fight them, then we fight them, jump them, ain't no one on one. Remember clutching at the function, I got locked up with a gun. You went in everybody's pocket and got money for my bun. I ain't know that it was a misdemeanor at the time. I ain't know about the laws. You get caught with a pistol, I'm like, damn, I'm gone for 10 years. I'm gone, bro. I don't fucked up. And then, bro, he really went in everybody's pocket. Anybody that had cream in their name, like I'm Maxo Cream, anybody that had cream in their name. He went in their pockets, got the money, got the money for my bun. And by the time he got all the money, he, like, you know what I'm saying? I called him back. I'm like, nah, nah, nah. Just hold the money, bro. I'm gonna be good. I'll be out in two weeks. It's just a misdemeanor. I'm good. I know you really miss some streets, but you ain't really miss it, nah. I know my life is look real sweet, but my real life it ain't no fun. Cause right now I'm out on bun. But do he on probation? My little bro on no run. He think he on vacation. My pops like in the system. He just my dying prison. My mom is co defended, so she got locked up with him. Can you imagine being on, being in the house with your family? and everybody on bun except for your little baby sister. Y'all all go to the same bell bun. He got sent on by his own sister. She the eyewitness. Every time I see my blood cousin, I don't even feel him. I went from Little League, Chuck E. Cheese, to like six months later, game banging, serving fiends and like that because she did that to my dad. You know what I'm saying? Did that to us. I can't even look at them the same. I look at them like I see what we was going through. Like I went from having all of Jordan's now I'm busting two for 89s. I got to hustle. We went from mama cooking every day, now we on Lone Star. Well, uh, she, you know what I'm saying, eating fish sticks and noodles and shit. I had to go from like a boy to a man real quick. She went through drugs until my own cousin started acting different. Cooking drugs with my older brother, baking soda, whipping, cooking drugs with my older brother till he started sniffing. I think my bro addicted, tried to put my nigga on, then he ended up stealing. I caught that nigga stealing crumbs and we was probably no million. I was helping him out, giving him money, buying shoes and clothes for his kid. You know what I'm saying? Looking out for him, helping him out with his rent. And he stole from me. It's what he stole too. He stole like money, petty shit. He stole a Supreme hoodie, a $1,200 Supreme hoodie, box logo hoodie. Sold it for 800 and then tried to lie like he ain't do it. Then I went and I seen it on the goddamn website. You know what I'm saying? He been a thief though. I knew the, the nigga was a thief. But I thought, like, you know what I'm saying? I could change him. But leaving death before the son of Father God, please forgive him. I pray to God, because if I see him, swear to God, I'm going to kill him. I stick to my morals. I stick to the codes. I still got morals that niggas don't 
still believe in. Like I never snitch on my brother, never turn on my brother. And then I don't got partners. If you my partner, you my brother. So that mean I'ma treat you like my brother. I'm not gonna try to talk to your bitch on the side. I'm not gonna steal from you. I don't believe in none of that. I got some change my niggas, change I'm getting, change they think I'm rich. They want me locked up in the cage. I'm fighting Rico just like Mitch. Rico, that's a organized crime. We all know that. All right, and you know who Rico is, I paid him full. Rico's like, yo, you know, I'm sorry about Sonny. You know what I'm saying? Anything to get your little mans back, I'm down, so what you got? Then Mitch like, yeah, man, so I got 14 bricks. Rico like, 14 bricks right here. He shot him, boom. Once he shot him, they start fighting. So he fighting Rico, you get it? And I'm fighting Rico, get it? Was it corny? Was it the punchline? You get it? The only time I wear a suit and tie is at a funeral or a courtroom for trial. I know it sounds crazy. I don't own no suit. The last suit I had, it was baggy as hell. I look like, you ever seen Charles Barkley or like a Shaquille O'Neal suit or like how the NBA players used to look in the 90s doing the drafts? Big, untailored. I don't like suits. I remember Lil Wayne had a um, line here like, we ain't wearing no suits because we ain't trying to be no presidents. So they always stuck in my head. I think I'm gonna get a suit though. What you think? I should get a suit. Y'all might go for Son of Max, get a suit. You know, just stay tuned. If you tell them yes, you they bro. You tell them no, then you a hoe. That's how I go.